everyone and welcome back into my channel. I'm going to share with you today uh, my next design team project for Country Craft Creations. Um, I made a 6x8 mini album with a 2 inch spine um, using the Fall Fun paper collection from Cartabella. Um, I love Cartabella's paper. It's nice and a nice heavy weight. It's textured. It's just everything. I love it. Anyway, so um, here on the cover, I just used one of the 3 by 4 cut-aparts, and um, it says fall is in the air. I wanted to keep it simple. Um, I don't know. I kind of really like it. Um, I just used a piece of the green solid cardstock, and this is the a, a, a really cute orangey green and red plaid. Um, I matted that. The, I matted... <laughs> The three by four card onto the plaid and then onto the green and um, I used some sequins here that I've had in my stash for quite a while the orange green and, and the yellow and it just it I love the way the light bounces off of it um, what I did with the sequins is I made a it's kind of hard to tell but I used I took the piece of pattern paper um, that I put on the spine I wrapped some tool around it so you know some of that you can hear it so it kind of like it's almost like a netting um, but it's you know really closely woven and I just wrapped three sides of it and then I put a whole bunch of um, sequins in there and then just glued it all shut on the back side um, I added actually I used some of this I don't know what this is, it's some sort of a cotton material that I've had. Um, so I actually tore it, I don't know if you could tell, I think you can tell, that I tore it, I, you know, I cut a little snip, then I tore it um, to give it like that ratty kind of a look. I'm, I'm starting to get into that now. Anyway, and then I took, I wrapped that around it to kind of separate the two, the two segments on the spine, and then I just added one of the stickers from the sticker collection it says Duncan's pumpkin pumpkin patch pick your own no pick your yeah pick your own <laughs> holy moly that was hard to read okay anyway so here's the view from the top there are three pages or group you know page groupings um, you could probably put a fourth in there because there's if you wanted to because there's a little more room in this one so here is where I just did the little bow, tied it shut. Uh-oh. Okay, so here we have inside. Oh, I just love the color. See how the color just, fall just comes to life. I just absolutely love it. Okay, <clears throat> so I took one of the, this is actually a four and a half by four and a half cut apart. Um, just made it into a little pocket. I love the leaf and I put some of the orange sequins here and then I these are some of the cut aparts that are in the collection crisp leaves and autumn memories this one says fall and I just angled the corners with my corner you know my angle corner chomper and then this one says in all things give thanks so those just kind of for journaling um, and or photos. So you can see this is our first little, it's kind of like a signature, but it's not a signature. There's the second one, there's the third one. So this is a, a pocket, whoops. This is a pocket and I just made some tags. Added, this is the pattern paper that I have on the spine, by the way. Um, just added a couple stickers from the collection and some of this hand dyed seam binding from Tamara Shop. And they just live right inside there. Oops. All right, so there's a sticker from the collection, Fall is my favorite. I just took a piece of um, green cardstock and just made like a little banner flag. Um, you could slide a photo underneath. This is one of the chipboard pieces from the collection. So this flaps up. I have some magnets holding that closed. That flaps up. 
I kind of left that plain for a nice photo or you could even journal with maybe a gold metallic pen. That would be a really good idea. Same down here. And then that flaps open. And uh, this is probably one of my favorite papers. Um, and then this says giving thanks. It's one of the stickers. And there's actually room here for a nice big tag. I just have not, to be honest, I forgot about it. And I just haven't cut them yet. Uh, but I will be adding a tag. So here is another kind of like a trifold flap thing. Um, this says pumpkins. It's one of the chipboard pieces. Love the pumpkins here. And then over here, this is a sticker. I just took the sticky off. Um, with some um, anti-static powder and this is another beautiful fall day I love this blue flannelly looking paper for fall I just absolutely love it and then that flips open and then there's some lanterns here and some vases and watering cans and sunflowers all the things and then I just created another big pocket and you could add another photo here and do some journaling here <clears throat> kept it really simple um, over here we have sorry I have a tickle <coughs> oops 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 we have two more pockets on this page um, I absolutely loved that tag thought it was gorgeous and this says home sweet home and that's the back because this these are from the cut apart page you can see these are some stickers from the collection. Love this one. <clears throat> then it opens up to this page. This vintage truck here. Loving this vintage truck. Um, I wasn't really sure where I was going to use it, but in the end I put it here. This is a flap. Well, actually, let's look at this first. So this is one of the chipboard stickers with the ladder and some pumpkins and some, um, what are those called, corn stalks? I don't think that's a corn stalk. It's some sort of a stalk. And then these two little cut aparts were on the cut apart sheet. I thought they were adorable. They fit perfectly in that little tuck spot. So here, um, again, this is clo kept closed with a magnet. So pull up on the little truck and there's room for journaling and maybe a small photo. This one comes down. There's two flaps here. I left this one blank for some journaling. In love with the sunflower paper. Left this blank for journaling, and then you could put some photos here. And then here, there is a nice big 4 by 6 cut apart. It says fall is the best time of the year. Love that. I actually want this on my front porch. <laughs> anyway, so love it. And over here on the next page is a double belly band. Um, there's that really cute pumpkin paper. And then here you can see is that that orange and red plaid. And then I just added this beautiful um, little vase of fall flowers and a pumpkin. It's a chipboard sticker. And this is, oh, I thought that was a booklet. Um, there's some of that blue seam binding. It's so pretty. So this is a four by six cut apart. <clears throat> I just put on a large tag. And it says, oh, now you can tell it says, Duncan's Pumpkin Patch, pick your own. <laughs> um, pumpkins, pies, and a cider. So that just slides right inside there. Then I just have this cute little, um, oops. Not really sure if it goes that way or that way. I guess it doesn't matter. That The paper with some leaves and some acorns. Yes. And then it's just a little... A little booklet tag and that slides in there and then I have um, I made just a little three by four actually three and a quarter by four and a quarter tag because I had this little piece of paper left over and I love it and I added stapled on some seam binding you have an instant tag and that sits in the skinnier belly band or lives right under the skinny belly band and then this is the last page it is a flap it is a, there's a pocket underneath Everything about this page screams fall to me. I'm loving the dark, the deep rich colors. Just, uh, I love it. There's that same paper that was just on that tag. I put a 
a green photo mat. These are some of the stickers from the sticker sheet. And it's a Gather Gratitude and Plentiful. I actually put some anti-static powder on the back to get rid of the sticky. And then I just pop them up on a foam square. So that, um, let's see, a photo can be slid right underneath. So then that opens up. And then you have the red flannel, check flannel, um, a flap. And then I made just two angle pockets here. And inside, there's that truck again. It says, hello, fall. I love the wood background. That just slides right in here. Held closed with the magnet. And then over here on the back, um, I actually meant to do some hand stitching around that pocket. Um, so here's another tag. This was one of the three by four cut aparts. I just poked a hole and I have these dies, um, cutting dies. I, they've been in my stash for forever. Um, I just cut a couple of leaves and just added them to some baker's twine. I thought that was cute. And then this is one of the cut aparts I just cut into a tag. It's really hard to tell, even in person, but it's, I mean, you get the idea that that's a tractor, I think, but it's all, it's so dark back here, you can't really see the rest of it. Um, and then there is this one, and it says fall is here, and it's one of the four by six cut apart. And I just tuck those back here, and that is our book. I just I just think it's adorable now on my screen this looks very yellow but it is actually um, like a light orange color and I'm kind of bummed that it's coming across as yellow but anyway so that's the book and then I actually I was having a look on Pinterest I was thinking about fall and what do people do in fall you know um, you go on hay rides you go pumpkin picking that type of thing I made this little this little cart it was so super easy to make it is minus the wheels it is three inches tall by seven inches wide and three inches deep I believe and I just put a little scrap piece of pattern paper in there um, and then I had these wheels they are the Tim Holtz Ideology Pulley Wheels. I've had these in my stash for years. Like, it's literally been years. I wish there was a date on here. Well, 2012. That tells you how long I've had them. I probably didn't get them in 2012. I probably got them a few, few years later. But I think Tamara might have these in her store, um, her online store. But if, they, if she does have them, I will put a link in the description box if you want to make this. Um, I don't really do a tutorial for this, but essentially all I did, I cut, I used some heavyweight chipboard. This is three inches by seven inches. Then I cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I cut seven one half inch by three inch tall strips of that same chipboard. So there's 14, there's seven, one, two, three, four, five, seven, seven, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, four, twenty-two of them. Um, and then I cut one, two, three, four, one half inch by seven inch, and then four three inch. Yeah, four one half inch by three inch pieces. And I just glued them to the chipboard every one half of an inch. So it was really easy to make. So I glued all them in um, and then just added these pieces along the top and bottom and that became an instant little buggy basket thing. And then here for this, this little handle, this is, whoopsie, five, I made, I cut um, one half inch by eight inches. Um, I just put, I don't know, maybe three inches underneath. Then I literally, you can see I just folded it in half. I glued it um, t 
to the top the top edge of the basket because um, I didn't want it to now I kind of wish I didn't because it's getting in the way of the book but anyway and then I just glued a little piece made a little cross at the top for the handle and that's two one half inch by two inches and um, I had these little pumpkins left over from those dies that I had and just cut a couple of pumpkins from the um, scrap pieces of paper and added some baker's twine. I literally just tied it right onto this handle. So yeah, and then these are again some fall leaves that I have the die cuts I have in my stash. Um, I have these um, alpha dies. I just cut out the word fall and there's another one of the, the pumpkin. This is thankful here. This is the little sticker from the sticker sheet and this is another yeah, this one's a sticker. Um, I just popped up on some foam squares. You can see the foam squares there and down on the bottom. Yeah, and I just fed some um, baker's twine through and tied a couple of bows from the seam bind of seam orange seam binding. Sorry. Yeah, and then um, again, you don't necessarily have to have the wheels. Um, it could just be a basket holding your book, but I had the wheels. I was looking through my stash. Um, these actually, I had to punch holes into the bottom of the basket or the bottom of the cart and they screw in so that, you know, it comes with the little screws. I had to screw them in again. You can't see it because I covered it up with pattern paper. Um, but yeah, that just made a instant basket. So I'm sure you saw it in the thumbnail of the video, um, but the basket, the book just sits in there like that, and it kind of, oh, did I bump my camera? I am so sorry. <laughs> I don't know when I bumped the camera. Um, damn it. So let's start off by wrapping our covers. What we're going to want is two pieces of, I used a medium weight chipboard. They are six inches by eight inches. Then we're also gonna need a spine and this is two inches by eight inches. Okay, so for the paper that we're gonna need to, need to wrap our uh, chipboard, we're gonna need two pieces that are eight by 10 and then one piece that is five inches by 10 inches. So the eight by 10s are for the covers and the five by 10 is for the spine. Um, and we'll get to these pages after we finish. So some of the things that I like to use, I know uh, if you watch my videos, if you watch most of the designers for Country Craft Creations, we have these cute little, what are these called? Spacers, acrylic spacers. There's two of them, or there's three that come in a set. You get two one inch by 12s and one one and a half by 12. The one and a half is used for the spine. And the two one inches, and you don't have to have these. It's not necessary, it's just fun to have. Um, you can actually use two pieces of scrap chipboard, um, one inch by 12 inches. And basically what this does is this helps you line up. Um, and I like to use my scoreboard. Um, I've tried it without my scoreboard and it goes horribly wrong for me. <laughs> so I use my scoreboard, um, you place your the paper, your cardstock, in your scoreboard, line it up in the corner. So if you put one here, one spacer here, one spacer here, you get a nice one inch border around the entire page. So I'm gonna take my six by eight piece of chipboard and you can use glue here, but I had, we only had one sheet of <laughs> the uh, eight and a half by 11 um, score tape sheets. I only had one left, so yeah, I'm using it here. So then you just line your chipboard up with the edge of the spacers and you get a beautiful one inch border around the entire piece of paper. So, I'm gonna make sure and 
burnish that really well so that you get a good stick with the between the paper and the chipboard. Then what I like to do is I just use my desk. You could uh, take I lost my scoring tool. Oh, here it is. You could take your your little stylus or your little scoring thing, the jig, and just score like this. Basically, it's just kind of breaking up the little fibers there. This helps make it easy to fold the paper. And I guess you can see I am using a craft cardstock for mine since my album is a fall album. Okay, and I'm just using my desk here to help fold along those little score lines that I did. There you go. Alright, so then next we are going to so when you fold, it's kind of hard to see because of the color of the paper, but when you fold on when you fold over the one inch border it creates this little square here um, we are just going to go ahead and cut straight up along that little fold line and do it both here and then I come over here and I'm just going to angle the corner or miter the corner to just get rid of some bulk everybody does this their own way um, I like to do it like this There are tools you can purchase to help you with this, but this does not have to be perfect. Um, this is going to basically get covered up with another piece of cardstock. So, um, you know, I, I tend to not be too picky about it. So what I try, what I like to do here is fold this top piece down and these side pieces in to see if I have any overhang. And I have a little bit of overhang over here. Oops, sorry, over here. So I'm just going to go in and snip that right off a little bit on this side. I'm going to do the same down here. Yep, those sides look good. So I'm going to take my glue. Whoop. Come on now. Come on, Emery, you can do it. And add some glue. Again, you can use score tape here, but... You know, I don't see the need for, I don't like to waste my score tape. <laughs> and uh, our glitter glue or any other kind of adhesive is good here as well. Okay, so I have that one. And By the way, so this is the, oh, I forget what it's called, the Precision Glue Press from My Sweet Petunia. Um, if you're interested in what this is, I actually have a review on my channel. And there are many, many other reviews out there from other crafters. Again, just going to fold that bit in, give it a good burnish, spread the glue around. A little bit of an overhang there. Okay, one more time. So you can see how quickly that comes together. Oops. Okay, and then what I like to do is kind of stand this up, and if you noticed, I put some glue right up against the chipboard. I just like to flatten that out. There's our first cover. Done. 
and off camera I created the second so that you should have something that looks like this two pieces that are six by eight and then we have our spine so then I have my piece of cardstock that is five inches by ten inches going to put a one inch spacer at the top here and then this inch and a half over here so um, because I did not have any more um, score tape sheets I had to use my 3 8 inch score tape which was fine works just the same So again, just going to line up the top corner of the chipboard right here in this corner. And what this gives you is two one and a half inch borders on, or oh, one and a half inch border, sorry, on the left side and the right side, and a one inch border across the top and bottom. So that's what we use these for. Again, you don't have to have these. Um, I know Tamara sells them in the shop. There's uh, various sizes too. I believe there's like half inch, quarter inch, and all different ones. Um, or you could just use a scrap piece of uh, chipboard. Okay, so let's do the same thing again. Just fold over. Let's give that a good crease. So we're going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and cut up that score line or that fold line. On all four score fold lines. And I'm just going to go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of an angle here. Then you end up with something like that. I just like to fold that in. See, I have a little bit of overhang right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just chop that right off. Same here. Not too bad. Basically, I'm just trying to remove any bulk that will be in place when I glue everything down. <clears throat> okay. Oh, but I should not have put my score tape on here already, but that's okay. I can just do this. Pull it back. And since I already have score tape on there, I am just going to go ahead. Well, actually, I'm going to put a little bit of glue right along here. And fold that in. Give it a good little burnish. Come back over to this side. Do the same. We should have something that looks something similar to that. And this one. Just checking to make sure that it doesn't look too wonky, even though again it's going to get covered with pattern paper. I'm going to go ahead and fold back. Mm, see, I do see a little bit of overhang there. I don't know how I missed that the first time. But hey, it happens. All right. Okay, so 
now what we do, we're actually going to flip this over to the back side or the, you know, it's the side that'll stick out on your, um, the spine of your book. And I'm going to grab some score tape. I'm going to do both score tape and some glue on this. So I'm going to start the score tape just a little ways away from the fold line, or the score line there. Okay, and then I'm going to add, I'm just going to add this really quickly. On both sides. I don't know about, about you, but I am very ready for fall. I'm here in the Northeast, and thankfully we're not having the crazy 100 degree temperatures like some places of the country are experiencing. But it is, it's a Saturday morning, and it's rainy and dreary today. Looking forward to just some beautiful fall and the colors and everything that goes with it. All right, so there we have um, the score tape on the spines. And what we're going to do is we're going to place whichever cover, the left front, the front cover, back cover, however you want to work on it. Um, did I do this wrong? No. And we are going to slide this under here like this and then adhere it down. So when you see this move like that, that means you, you actually did it correctly. I'll never forget Tamara telling me that. Okay, so actually this doesn't look like it's in focus. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to remove my score tape. And I'm going to put a little bead of glue right along the very top edge of the score tape. And I'm going to just do a little trail. I know it seems like overkill, but it actually gives you a little bit of wiggle room time. Okay, so I want to do this. Hope you can see. Excuse my head if my head gets in the gets in the frame. So I don't want to do too much space, but I definitely want to leave a little bit of space in between the two pieces of chipboard. So I kind of like to lift up on the spine piece so that I can actually see how much space I have in between. That looks okay to me. So you see how that pops up? So then you know you have at least, you have good movement. Clear that out. Come in. Burnish and burnish and burnish. All right, I'm going to turn that back over. And repeat this on the right side. I'm sure most of you are already wizards at creating these spines. I'm, I'm sorry, these books. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come in over on this side. Line it up. Again, you don't wanna get too close. Give yourself enough space. You see, since I have that little bit of glue on the score tape, it's allowing me to pick up the book and adjust it as I need to. Okay. So we're going to give that a good burnish. And then what I want to do is in between the two pieces of chipboard, 
I want to you want to take a blunt um, bone folder you could use a, a ballpoint pen cap something as long as long as it's a blunt tip and not something pointy like this because this will push this um, while this is a comfortable bone folder the pointy edge will poke right through your your cardstock and you don't want at this point you don't want that to happen because then you have to pull it all apart so I'm gonna do the same on this side okay so then we have our book is together it's a little floppy because there's nothing holding it together but there is our spine looks nice and clean on both sides just so nice Okay, and then what I like to do okay then what I like to do I'm gonna actually remove my score tape from here and I'm gonna have to put down some some glue here normally this would be score tape but I got a little crazy Okay, so then we have our piece that is, you'll need a piece that is four inches by seven and seven eighths. And that's enough to cover the two inch spine, have one inch on either side, and it'll leave you an eighth of an inch um, border around it. So I forgot that I put the score tape on here, so I didn't have to just waste that glue, but that's okay. As you can see, at this point, I pretty much ran out of my score tape sheets. I'm just piecing it all together. So, what is today? Today is September 9th, 2023. So, how many of you are going to join us for the October retreat? I know I will be there. I hope many of you can make it as well. It's always so fun to meet new people at the retreats. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm do the, just going to try to line this up, make it even on the top and the bottom, and stick that down. Let's give it a good burnish. And what I like to do is kind of start now, you can see a little bit here. If you watch right here, see how the it starts to define the um, the crease. So I like to lift up slowly on that. Take my bone folder and very gently, but with some pressure at the same time, define that little fold. So what I'm doing here is pushing this top layer of cardstock that has. The score tape to the bottom layer of the cardstock. Okay, and this is where I always hold my breath. <laughs> Fold that over, and I go back one more time on this end, on this side, and just kind of clean it up. Okay, again, being careful that you don't push too hard because you don't want to um, rip through your cardstock. So let's just repeat that over here on this side. Very gently. You want to do this before it's ready because you might tear your cardstock. But if you're using Artisan, you should be okay. Because you know how we all love our Artisan cardstock. Okay. There we go. That should look something like that on the inside. There, now you see it tightens up, and I can fold it flat that way, 
and I can fold it flat that way, and that is the fold flat method, or lay flat method. <laughs> um, I feel like it still needs a bit of love and attention on this side. All right, and then we have, now you can make the decision to cover these up, this ugly chipboard up, um, with some of your chosen cardstock color, or, you know, it's gonna get covered with pattern paper anyway, but I typically like to put a pocket on this page and maybe a waterfall or something over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover both, both of these just to clean it all up and get rid of the ugly part. So um, if you want to do the same, you're going to want two pieces of your cardstock that are five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. And, or if you like more of a border, um, you can do seven and three quarters and five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. That'll give you a full quarter of an inch all the way around. Um, I like to have just a little bit of that showing through. So I'm going to stick to five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. Okay. All right. And again, you can use wet glue on this. So I'm going to line this up. What I also like to do, hmm, I don't have a piece, here we go, a piece of scrap paper. Um, sometimes I have a hard time, I don't know if it's depth perception or whatever it is, but it, when I'm putting, you know, the same color cardstock to the same color cardstock, I have a hard time sometimes um, seeing the edge of this paper because it's just going to blend in with this paper. So I try, I just put a little piece of uh, you know, a different color paper underneath it, and I don't know why, but that tends to work for me. I mean, I don't know why I have a problem with it, but... Okay. Alright, and I'm just going to repeat the same over here. And, um... I, sorry, I neglected to mention that all of the dimensions and everything that you need, you know, cardstock, chipboard, all that good stuff, is listed in the cutting guide. Um, so there's a free cutting guide. All of the designers for Country Craft, we, we put a lot of work into, you know, well, because we love it, but we put a lot of work into the videos and um, they're always free. So... We hope that you appreciate them and that you enjoy them. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Easy, 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 Anne Marie. Oh, okay. I should never do that. <laughs> okay. I'll finish what I was saying after I finish this. Oh, my goodness. That was almost a disaster. Okay. All right. Whew. So we hope that you appreciate the cutting guides. Um, I know when I first started doing uh, mini albums and things, I really loved a good cutting guide, you know? Um, so anyway, hope you appreciate those. So there we go. So that's all nice and clean, ready to go. And then next we will work on the hinge and creating the inside pages. All right, for our hinge, we're gonna want one piece of the cardstock that is four inches, and I'm gonna have my pages be seven inches tall. So you want it to be four by seven, and you'll place this in your scoreboard, and we're gonna score it on with the four inch side on the top, and we're gonna score at a half of an inch, or every one half of an inch. So we're gonna score at one half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, and three and a half. Now I'm doing the type of hinge that doesn't have the flaps on the ends um, because I al we already covered our spine 
um, so we don't we won't have any flaps hanging over here so once you score everything the way I fold it is on that first score line we're gonna create a mountain right there's our mountain and then there's a gusset so we're gonna go to the next score line and we're gonna score do an under do the reverse so there's your your peak your valley I guess and then we're gonna score these two together we're gonna fold like that so we made two flaps then you have a gusset and then we have three flaps so it's gonna look like that in the book actually it'll look like that okay I like to have a half inch gusset um, just because I like to over embellish everything <laughs> So, um, so that's what it'll look like from the top, and this is what it looks like in the back, right? Not much. So what I do is we know that these first two pieces are going to have to be adhered together to form a flap, or I'm, I'm sorry, a tab. So I put a piece of score tape there, and close it, stick that together so you have your first tab. Then you have your gusset. Then I put another piece of score tape here so that you can create tab number two. And we'll go back and we'll burnish these in a minute. And then there's a gusset. And then put a piece of score tape there and make your third tab or hinge okay and then what you see you're left with is I put two pieces of score tape on the underside of the gussets because that's the part that's going to actually stick in the book if I hope that'll make sense so I'm going to go ahead and just give my score tape a really good burnish on all these hinges then I'm going to actually fold them the other way, break up the fibers so everything folds nicely and lays nicely. You know, some people question why I would do that. And I say, because it's my book and I want to. <laughs> but no, I actually... I think it I really do think it helps with um, the hinges so I can see normally you know if I don't do that it feels like sometimes it's a little tight depends also too on how you fold but um, yeah it, I think it just breaks up the fibers and I do it because I want to. <laughs> so I'm going to do one more time. Okay. So there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to, I'll just use these scissors. I'm going to angle the hinges here. Or um, miter the corners on the hinges. I just feel like it makes it easier to slide the pages on when I do that. Okay, so there's our hinge put together. It's really quick and if anybody that's been following me for a long time knows that I used to hate doing these. Absolutely hated this hinge system <laughs> hate it because I can never really get it straight um then I was bound and determined I just sat down one day and I said I'm gonna do it everybody else is doing it I should have to do it <laughs> but anyway so now it's all put together we're gonna go ahead and put it in our book so if you remember I said this is only seven inches tall where our book is eight inches tall so what I like to do is grab a ruler <laughs> 
and I like to measure down so if this is seven inches tall that tells me there's an inch on either end or there's an extra inch so I like to kind of give myself a guide um, draw a line where's my pencil a half inch from the bottom just kind of give myself just very lightly with a pencil gives me an idea of when I'm when I'm um, placing this so that I could place I can make it straight but you know now that I'm thinking because we're gonna have yeah let's do it okay so just made myself a little mark I don't know if it's very faint I don't know if you could see it but that is purely for me to know How to keep this straight and then you want to definitely get over this you don't want to it makes it much much easier so if you stand up and you go to set it down it makes it much easier to put it down I don't know maybe that's all in my head but <laughs> I find it a lot easier and then just gonna go in and give this a really really good burnish Make sure it really sticks really well to the spine. And I like that I have at least a half of an inch if I put it down straight, and I think I did. Um, you have a half inch here in between. You can kind of see it there. Oh, that's better. You have a half inch, a half inch gusset, half inch gusset, and another half inch. So you have a half inch on either side so that you can embellish here and you can embellish your first page. So it's all about the embellishments. <laughs> so yeah, so there we go. That is the hinge. Oh, and the rule of thumb that I use, I think I, I, think I usually say this in my videos. Um, this one, this book has three flips and flaps type of a page, pages, but the way I determine how wide my spine should be is based off the number of pages I'm gonna have. And um, I mentioned I like to have a half inch gusset in between my pages. So in this case, because um, half inch gusset in between my pages and on either side of the hinge. So in this case, my spine is two inches wide. So that fits three hinges, right? If I wanted four hinges, I would probably go to two and a half inches on my spine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, I don't wanna make this book very wide. Um, you know, don't want it to be too chunky. So we're gonna do something cute on the spine. And um, yeah, so that's a good rule of thumb. Every page, you know, for the size of your spine, if you can have six pages, you want a three inch spine. Did I say that right? Yes. So, if you have any more, if you have any questions about that, definitely leave me a, a message um, or a comment below, and I will get back to you um, with a little further clarification on that. So, there's our spine. So let's get busy working on the pages. We're gonna go ahead and start putting together the inside pages, and there are going to be three pages. Um, three pages total, but there's going to be several flaps and pockets and tags and things like that. So we're going to want, you're going to want to cut three of each of these. So you're going to cut three pieces of your cardstock that are five and a half by eight. We're going to put the, in our scoreboard, <clears throat> excuse me, on the eight inch side, and we're going to score at a half of an inch and then at seven and a half inches. And then what we're just what we're doing there is creating these little tabs that we're gonna that are gonna create our base our base page or our sleeve. So in addition to that, you're gonna want another piece that's five and a half by seven. And that is the size of our base page. So um Again, we're going to do the five and a half by eight inch piece scored at a half of an inch 
and seven and a half inches on the eight inch side. And then we are going, to, you can either add wet glue or score tape or other some other sort of um, double sided sticky tape, whatever you prefer. Um, and then I'm just gonna come in here and miter the corners. This just makes it much easier to slide these pages onto our hinge. So, I'm gonna move the paper back. And then I like to use my scoreboard to line everything up, keep everything as straight as I can. And I like to start in the bottom left corner and then stick it down. And then I'm just going to turn it around here and make sure everything lines up. And give it a good varnish. As you can see, we just created a little sleeve. Okay. And then, oh, you can see that my, I'm off a little bit right there. I would, I'm just going to go ahead and take my big scissors. Cut that little bit of, that little sliver off. You could see how skinny it really is. This could be, <clears throat> it could be that I, I cut, my cut was off could be any anything my fold was off so your base page ends up being five and a half by five and a half wide by seven inches tall and this so this little sleeve is going to slide right onto right on your onto your hinge like that but we're not going to do that quite just yet okay so you can go ahead and create two more of these. I did the other two off camera. So now I have three total pages. So I'm um, going to move on to page number one. There are several pieces of several pieces of cardstock that you'll need for this. First is we're going to put a pocket on here and you're going to want to cut it at four and a half by eight inches. And we're going to score at one half inch on three of the sides, right? So if you could start, if you want to start on the four and a half inch side, you just cut, or I'm sorry, not cut. You're going to score at a half of an inch. I like to rotate it once to the right, score a half of an inch, and then bring it around to the other side and score it at another half of an inch. So that's scoring at a half inch on three sides. Next, the next thing we're going to want is two flaps, and I don't know why I didn't put score tape on them, but you're going to want to cut two of these, because one's going to be a top flap, one's going to be a bottom, two of them that are four by six and a half, and on the six and a half inch side, you're just going to score it at a half of an inch, and you're going to do that twice. And I am just going to go ahead and add score tape really quickly. Most times I do this with wet glue but just to keep the, the video moving so it's not two hours long, I'm just going to use score tape. So those are going to be the two flaps that will be on top of the pocket. And then I just cut a couple of tags that we're going to actually side into the pocket. So you'll want two pieces cut at three and three eighths by five. Hope you can see that three and three eighths by five. All right, so let's grab page number one that we just created. We're going to put the pocket together first. <clears throat> so again, here I use score tape, but you could use wet glue. You could use your art glitter glue, the barely art glue, whatever whatever it is that you like. Um, but what I want to do, because we're do what I'm going to do, sorry, because I'm making a pocket. I am going to trim or angle those two corners off or miter them. And then you can see here when you score um, at a half inch on two sides, it's going to create a little intersection here, which creates this little square. 
And we are going to actually just cut away. So I'm going to angle. I'm going to angle both of these tabs or miter both of those tabs. I just you could do it in two separate cuts, but I just did it all in one cut. Um, let's see. Let's just do it again. You can see here's that little square I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to come at from down here. I'm just going to do just a little bit of an angle right up to that where the two lines intersect. And then I'm just going to turn a little bit and angle again. So, okay, and then we're just going to fold on all those score lines, fold and burnish. And we're just creating that pocket. Okay. So the way I like to do the pocket is I like to take the longest edge first and fold that in and then bring the two shorter ends over. That kind of helps hold everything in place so things aren't flapping all over the place when you're trying to set it down. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my paper backing. You can add your glue. But, but I do notice I have this little, this little piece of hanging off right there. I'm just going to snip that off. Okay, so if th this is our page. It, this is the five and a half, this is the seven inch side. We're gonna actually put this, you wanna make sure that you're opening. Of course, right now, both ends are open, but I'm just gonna turn this, put it in my scoreboard to help keep everything straight, and I'm just gonna line up the edge, the folded edge of my pocket with the edge of my, my base page. So, that's going to look something like this. And then you just kind of stick it down. And make sure you give a nice burnish, crisp burnished edge. Okay. So again, here it's open. And here is the pocket. So these two tags, I cut one to go this way, there, this spot, and one to go in here. Since we're here, I'm going to grab my angle punch. It actually makes it look like I have this angle punch from We Are Memory Keepers. Corner Chomper, it's, it has photo on one edge and an angle on the other. I'm going to use the angle, and I'm just going to cut this, it makes it look just like a tag. I know it's hard to see because it's craft on craft, but you get the idea. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we'll just put that one, pop that one right in there. All right, and next we are going to put one flap on the top and one flap on the bottom. So again, I just like to angle those corners. This is not necessary on a flap like this, uh, but I just like to do it. All right. So I'm gonna turn mine Again, I'm going to turn it sideways. Actually, I'm going to put this one upside down. I'm going to put this one upside down. I want to make sure. Let me do this again with the gold. Uh oh. Whoopsie. <laughs> I dropped too much off of my. I dropped something off of my table. Um. Oh crap. Okay, we'll clean that up later. Uh. So. Here, I just put a piece of, a different color piece of paper in there um, to make it easier to line up this edge. So I'm gonna take this folded edge of this four by six and a half inch flap, and I'm gonna make sure that it lines up with this edge, because this is the same width as this, and we don't want anything hanging over. And if something hang, hangs over, it's not that big of a deal, because we can just trim it right off. 
but I try to do my best to make sure that it's there we go make sure that uh, nothing hangs over all right I'm gonna do the same thing again I'm gonna turn it around this way and this one's gonna come from the bottom if you decide you want to see both of them come from this way like a little waterfall if that's what you'd like to do you can do that but I'm gonna do one tab on top one on bottom or flap I'm sorry not a tab <clears throat> So that is page one done. Now I may come back and actually add a magnet here. Um, I don't know, I think maybe once I put the pattern paper down, it might be heavy enough and it, it won't need a magnet to stay down. But yeah, see it kind of flaps around a little bit. So I might come back and put a magnet down, but I might not. So, okay, so that's page one finished. So it comes together pretty quickly. All right, page two. Oh, and look at these little paper clips. Are these not the cutest? They're so cute. Okay, so page two. Let me see, what did I do with page two? All right, page two has two flaps. They're gonna, it's gonna come together like this, one flap, one flap. And there's going to be a pocket and a tag in that one. So the first thing you need, your actual pocket is going to be a piece of cardstock six and a half by six. And we're going to do the same thing we just did with that last pocket. We're going to score, put it in our scoreboard and score at a half of an inch on three sides. Okay. So <clears throat> we need to fold and burnish on the score lines. So now we need to do the same that we did on the last pocket. Let's get rid of those, the bulk here in the corners. Okay, and we are going to just do a quick angle cut. I'm going to remove the paper backing here. And start forming the pocket. Now you just want to make sure that your um, your opening is always going to be on the left. Okay. And that you you have the right orientation. So this is the top. So you just want to make sure everything stays lined up. And then we are going to take this pocket and we are going to line up the bottom left corner. If the bottom right is easier for you, you know, have fun, have at it. But I just have always been a little backwards <laughs> and I start on the left. Okay. Right, so there is our pocket. Now... There is a, a tag here, and the tag is five inches, five inches by six and a half inches, and that's just gonna slide right up inside there. Now this, mm, I don't think I thought this one through. Okay, so now we're gonna have two flaps. They're gonna open like this, okay? So you need two pieces of cardstock that are four and three quarters by six and seven eighths. We're gonna put this in the scoreboard on the four and three quarter inch side 
and we're going to score at a half of an inch. Okay, so we just made a half inch flap and you're going to do that on both pieces. And then what I'm going to do on this one is I am, I put my score tape on the inside of the flap, right? So if this, if this is the front, this is the back, I'm calling this the inside of the flap. I am going to actually, because if you remember, this is just, basically this is just a sleeve and it's open on both sides. I'm going to actually glue it on the inside okay so but what I want to do is get rid of that little bit of extra bulk there and I'm just gonna make an angle cut on both of these it just makes it easier to slide it into the sleeve Okay, and you want to make sure that your score tape or your glue is on the inside of that flap. We don't, we don't want to glue the sleeve closed, but what we're going to do is just glue it to the top. So this will slide in like this. Straighten it up as best you can. Okay, uh, where'd my... Okay, so we're just going to open that up a little bit. Oops. And try to make it straight. You don't want to go over the score line. And then you're going to see it's going to want to do that. But after you give it a good burnish, and once we get some pattern paper on, and we might just do a super cute little closure. So you can see though, it's still open, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I mean, this is kind of like a gatefold, but they they overlap. So again, I'm just gonna help lift this up to help me see where my score line is. You can actually add a little bit of glue to the score tape to give you a little more wiggle room in case it, you set it down too soon. Okay, there you go. Okay, that one needs. There. All right. All right, and um, you can, before you glue these down, you can decide, do you want to do some sort of a decorative edge punch or do you want to corner around your corners? Um, you know, that's completely up to you. I'm just, oh, I wrote that in pen. That's okay. So that is page two for now done. So we have page one, page two, our first base page is completed. I'm gonna set that one aside. I'm going to bring in another base page. Again, it's a little sleeve. Um, I'm going to do page three. So for page three, we are, okay, you'll need two pieces of your cardstock. We're going to make two pockets with two little booklet tags. So you want two pieces of cardstock that are four and three eighths by five. And again, we're gonna repeat the same thing we just did. We're going to put it in the scoreboard. It doesn't matter which side you start on. You're gonna score it a half of an inch on three sides. One, two, and three. Okay, you're gonna go in. Oh, I'll need to show you on this one. <laughs> we're gonna go in and Cut out that bulk. Score on the score lines, or fold on the score lines. Fold and burnish, give it nice and crisp. Okay, as you can see, it's a little bit of a skinnier, taller pocket. 
So we have two of those. And then we're also going to make these two little flap, it's not a booklet, but it's like a, a, a flap tag, so to speak. Um, and these are, and I don't want to write on these because um, I might not use a full piece of pattern paper to cover it. These tags are three and one quarter wide by 10 inches long. And you put it in your scoreboard on a 10 inch side and just score it right in half at five inches. Okay, and you're gonna do that twice. So here is our page, our base page. We're gonna go ahead and form the two pockets. Oh, I forgot, I like to angle that edge. I'm going to do that on this one. Okay, let's form this pocket. We're going to put one pocket. I thought it'd be fun to put one with the pocket opening on the left and the other one with the pocket opening on the right. So this actually ends up measuring three and three eighths, I believe. Yes, three and three eighths tall because your page is only seven inches and I wanted to leave a little bit of space in between the two pockets. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. So remove the paper backing. And I am going to line this up in the bottom right corner because my pocket's gonna open from, yeah, from the left. So I'm gonna line that. Go. <clears throat> so that's one pocket and then I thought it'd be fun you could just put the, um, the booklet in just like this you know into your pocket but I thought it'd be fun to leave one flapping out on top kind of like so all right and then you're going to do the same thing on the top. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're going to have the pocket come from the right hand side. So I'm going to turn it like this just so that I could see what I'm doing. Again, my pocket opening is going to be on the right. So I'm going to come in and line everything up. I don't know I hope you can see that small little space that's right in between there um, between the two pockets I didn't want them to interfere with each other so that is where um, our little flap tag is gonna go and live on that page so I think it's fun so that's page three done and then once all this is covered with pattern paper it will look really cute um, I have an idea we'll get there <laughs> so that is page three see how this is moving along really quickly and again don't worry about writing down any dimensions or anything like that. Everything is in your cutting guide. So this is page four. Oops. All right, let's see what we need. And who's surprised we're gonna put another pocket in. <laughs> so again, we're gonna cut a six and a half by six piece of, excuse me, piece of a cardstock. We're going to score it at a half of an inch 
on three sides. Again, it doesn't matter where you start. Okay, we are going to angle the corners, remove some bulk in the corner bulk. I really need to come up with a better name than that. Okay. And let's form our pocket. I forgot to fold and burnish first. That's all right, I'll do it now. <clears throat> Move our paper backing. All right, so just make sure that your page is right side up. What did I do? Oh, I thought I glued it shut. <laughs> okay, so the opening is on the left. I'm going to turn it over. Here is our pocket. I'm going to line it up in the bottom. Just like we did twice before. And stick it down. Okay, and then this one is going to have a flap at the top okay and your flap is three and a half inches by five and a half inches on the three and a half inch side you put the three and a half inch side in your scoreboard and we're going to score here at one half of an inch okay and just going to miter those little edges so I'm going to turn mine upside down to make it easier for me to see. I'm going to remove the backing of the score tape and I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to line up the folded edge of my flap with the top of my book and line it up along the side too because your flap is the same width as the page. And I'm going to stick that down. Okay. And that's what that's looking like. Okay. Um, you can corner around the pages if you want, um, or use a decorative edge or a decorative, decorative corner punch. Um, I have not decided yet what I'm going to do, so. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do one of those figure eight type closures here, and we'll do that when we decorate the pages. But also what I want to do is add in a couple of flaps. Since this flap folds up, I wanted to add a couple that fold down. So I cut two pieces of my cardstock, five and three eighths by six. Put this in my scoreboard on the six inch side and score it at one half of an inch. And that's it. We're going to do that twice. Okay, and now we're going to add some score tape. Again, you could do score tape or glue. I wish I had a penny for every time I say that. <laughs> and do the same here. All right. And then fold on that score line and burnish. <coughs> Fold and burnish. And then we're gonna come back over here, make sure everything's straight, everything's upright on the right side. And I'm going to remove the paper backing. This is where you can add some score tape. I mean, Wet glue. Okay, I hope you can see this. All right, so I am gonna, again, take that folded edge of this flap and line it up with the folded edge on the, I mean, the bottom of the book. Okay, 
Okay, there's one. And the second one. Now I'm not sure. I'm going to do this upside down because I'm going to see first. And then I'm going to take, instead of like with a waterfall, um, I don't know if you can see, oh, there you can see the tab of the prior one. So this piece right here is the tab for this. And with a traditional waterfall, we usually would butt it up against that. But for this one, I am going to place this one right on top, this tab, right on top of the previous tab. Okay, so I know you're probably not going to be able to see this because of the color of the paper, but I'm just going to put that right on top of there so you can see we only have one. Okay, so they stack on top of each other instead of waterfall, and <laughs> if that's a word, it's a word now. So we have those. Again, you can decide if you want to corner chomp these uh, around the corners or not, or just leave them square. So as you can see, that's going to be that's going to pop up a little bit. So I am going to go ahead and use a magnet. Um, I know Tamara sells these um, the large basic gray magnets in her at Country Craft Creations because that's where I get mine. So I am going to take one positive one. And these are a stinker to get out. One positive one, one negative. Okay, let them find each other. And let me see, where do I want to put that? I don't know, maybe right about there. Where's my pencil? I just like to make a little mark. So I'm going to remove this adhesive sticker. You can see in my pokey tool. <laughs> it likes my pokey tool. Remove the sticker. <laughs> wow, this is being crazy. Um, doesn't matter whether you start with the positive or the negative. You just have to stick it down. Okay, and then I'm just going to stick right here make sure everything's squared up and then I am going to remove this sticker make sure everything's tight and square stick that down and then I like to just whether it does any good or not, I don't know. I've never had one come loose when I when I use an extra piece of score tape, but it gives me a peace of mind. All right, so that is page four. All right, so let's just look real quickly at what we have here. So far, we have page one with this flap and this flap, a couple pockets. We have two pockets over here with a couple uh, folded tags. That one goes that way, that one goes that way. So that one's getting caught on something. Hmm. Have to fix that. Okay, so that's page. <laughs> page one, page two has these two flaps, and there's a big pocket with a large tag that folds up. That may end up being a magnet as well to hold it shut. Here is oh, so this one is page three, and then page four is the one that we just did. Okay. Now page five, again, I'm going to pull out my third and final base page. So this is page five, and this is a 
double belly band page. I do these in just about every single one of my albums. So you'll need the bottom belly band is going to be three inches by eight inches. We're going to put it in scoreboard. Actually, let me say the top belly band is going to be two inches by eight inches. You're going to score both of these the exact same way. You're going to put them in your scoreboard with the eight inch side on the top right and you score it half of an inch and seven and a half inches. Okay, and you'll do the same thing with a two inch wide. So I am going to turn these off. Oh, yikes, I cut that one a little too far. I'm going to take both of these and fold them on the score line and give it a good burnish. <coughs> Do the same with the two inch piece. Right. So have my base page here. I am going to actually it doesn't matter but I turned it over and you can measure if you want to. Again this is five and a half inches this is three inches. Um, you can measure it to get dead center but I really don't care that much <laughs> so I'm just eyeballing it. I mean I care but you know you know what I mean. Okay and then put your adhesive on the other side. Straighten everything up. Stick that down. Okay, I know it's hard to see, so I'm going to actually put this piece in here. Okay, so you can see where the, the wider portion of the belly band ends. And then we're going to take the smaller one and we're going to center it right on top of the bigger one. Okay, so again, add your glue or your score tape. And this is three inches wide. So this is two, three quarters and three quarters. To center that as best as you can. Just stick it down. So now we have a double belly band. And when you get to the part, when we get to the uh, decorating of the pages part, um, you can actually just slide, if this is five and a half by seven, you probably cut a piece that's five and a quarter or five and three eighths by six and seven eighths. You could slide that right under here if you want to. Um, or you can just cut strips. Let's see, there's probably, what is that? Probably an inch and a half on either side. You can cut an, a strip just wide enough to tuck underneath the belly band so you don't waste paper. It's up to you. But I always put a piece under here. And then we have two tags. I might end up adding more tags by the time we're done. But this tag is five inches by, oh, yes, this tag is five inches by six and seven eighths inches. And that is the one that I would put here. I know it's hard for you to see, I'm sorry. And then I just cut another one that's three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And um, I would put, maybe just put that there. Um, with a paper collection, I'll probably just put a three by four cut apart on here um, and just slide that in. Or if you remember, we did these three, what are they, three and a quarter? No, three inches by 10 inches and we folded them in half. This is an extra one. You can actually put that in there or you can slide it in behind the larger one. You could put use two of those. 
Um, actually, I think I will just leave that in there. I'll put that there. Put that up there. Yeah. So that is the belly band page, page five. And we are already at page six. I feel like that we've just flown through this thing. So this is actually probably the most difficult page and it's really not even that difficult. <laughs> um, so we are gonna have a flap. It's five, you need a piece of cardstock five and a half by six and a half. And we're gonna put it in our scoreboard on the six, oh, that is a little, a little beyond five and a half or six and a half. Let me cut that real quick. That was a little more than six and a half. <laughs> okay, so again, five and a half by six and a half. On the six and a half inch side, we're going to score it a half of an inch. Then we're going to have two angled pockets. So it's going to be one pocket that looks like that. And you're going to mirror each other. So they're going to be looking at each other. Um, so you'll need two pieces that are four and a half by six. And what you want to do is score at one half of an inch on the six inch side, rotate it to the four and a half inch side, and score it a half of an inch. Okay? And I will show you what we are going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and um, get rid of that bulk. I'm going to set this aside for a second. So. The way you get the angled pocket, you can use a good old fashioned ruler and a craft knife. I can never seem, and I don't know what it is, I don't think it's the surface I work on, but I could never, I like, I hold this so tight, but it's inevitable I make it move like that. So um, I just use my, my paper trimmer. And what we're gonna do is, if you remember, so we have those half inch uh, tabs so fold that down on the score line fold it and burnish and fold and burnish on the other one what we're gonna do is we are gonna cut from right there at the edge of the tab to the edge of that one okay so I'm gonna put this in my paper trimmer I hope you can see this Oop. so using this line right here I'm putting that okay the very edge of that is on the line and the very edge down here I know I just moved it is on the line just gonna close it and slice. take a deep breath and just slice it off <laughs> so yeah so you end up with two pockets that look like that I'm going to bring my page back in. So you have these little leftover pieces. Um, I would keep these because you can actually use them for another pocket. You can just draw a bead of glue. Um, what I'm going to do with these is what, whichever pattern paper I decide to use, I'm just going to use this as a template so that I can, you don't have to do too much work to figure out, you know, um, how to cut the paper on these angle pockets. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Oh, I keep misplacing this. This thing is humongous. How can I, I keep misplacing it. Anyway. Okay. So you're going to have one pocket opening on the right again and one pointing towards the left. But just like I've done, we've done how many times already? We're just going to form our little pocket. I'm going to turn, make sure that your page, the direction, everything's right. I am going to go ahead and line up the folded edge of the pocket with the folded edge of the, the or the bottom of the page.
Okay, so there is, there's our first pocket. Okay, let's do the same one, this one. <coughs> oh, forgot to turn that off. Oh, and to avoid having those, you can just, before you cut it in your paper trimmer, before you cut the angle pocket, just um, fold those flaps under and it'll automatically trim those off for you. Okay, now we're just going to take this one. I'm going to do the same thing. Line up the edge with the edge of our page. Oops. It's a little bit bulky there, but that's all right. We'll cover it with a pretty and nobody will ever see it. <laughs> there we go. So then we have another pocket that goes that way and one that goes that way. So let me see if I have use these two. So we have this pocket here, and then we also have this big pocket here. Okay, that's what we have for now. Let me put these back. So then we're gonna add a flap. Did we already talk about the flap? Five and a half by six and a half. Um, we're gonna put it in the scoreboard on the six and a half inch side. Um, score it a half of an inch. Okay, let's get rid of these little tabs here. All right, so I'm going to turn mine upside down and I'm going to fold the tab under and we're going to line up the folded edge of the, of the flap with the top of our page. There we go. And then we are going to have another fun little closure here that we will actually create after, pardon me, after we uh, put down the pattern paper. So that, those are the, our six pages. So there's three, three base pages. And then you can see there's a bunch of uh, flips and flaps and pockets and all the fun stuff. Very interactive. So now what we need to do is get these pages into this book. And this used to be one of the parts that I feared the most. So, but what I am going to do is wipe off my glue gun. I am going to, um, this is not a glue gun. This is that precision glue press. It's, it's not hot glue. Um, I actually emptied this Nouveau bottle out. Actually, you get, a, you get an empty bottle. Um, I filled this up with our glitter glue. Because <laughs> I, lo I love the press, but I don't like that glue. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to each side of this hinge. Oh, this thing is fantastic. Okay, and then I'm going to take page one, again, making sure that it's right side up. I have put it in upside down in the past. I'm um, going to open it up and slide it onto that hinge. Really? Come on, everybody's watching. Okay, now before I stick it all the way down, I just want to make sure that I'm not going too far over 
on that hinge you want to make sure that you can still get that it's straight okay and that your pages will still fold still fold flat sorry Our pages are a little bit bulky, but we should be okay. So there's the first pages in, and it's folding pretty flat. And it's straight-ish. <laughs> okay. Let's do that again with page number two. Seems like a lot of glue, but it's really not because it's a it's a really thin bead, and I'm sure I just do overkill. Okay, so that's page one, page two. This is page three. Everything's straight up and down. Kind of just if you see what I'm doing, I'm just kind of opening. I should probably take these flaps out. Makes it easier to put the page on. Okay, make sure that's straight. Okay. And there are some people who prefer to not put their hinge in until um, until they, they're at this point where they're ready to put the pages on the hinge and then they put the whole mechanism onto the spine. Um, I just, I don't do that. I don't know why. I just never have. Um, for no reason other than I just never have. <laughs> so, alright, so that's page two. Base page two is down. Excuse me. And this page. Yes. Three. All right. And again, just opening that up, lining it up. I just take my dry baby wipe and just seal that as well as I can on both sides. And so let's take a look again. So you see how it's laying pretty flat. Um, we will probably just put some pattern paper here. Um, I may end up putting a waterfall here. I just don't want to run out of the pattern paper, so um, I may end up just putting a pocket here. We'll see. We'll see together. You'll know when I know. <laughs> so here again. Whoops. Whoa, did, oh. oh no, my glue must have seeped. That's okay. It'll be covered with pattern paper. So we have flap, flap, tag, tag, and you turn it. And we have this opens, and then this opens, and here is, so hard to see, here is a tag. And then over here is our little pockets. Hmm. That one, it must not have stuck that down all the way, so whenever something gets caught like that, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see what I'm doing right here? See how my ruler's in there? I just like to get in there. The glue, the score tape might have just moved or whatever. 
I just like to take my ruler and get down inside there and help open that up. Okay, there's that one. There's that one. Oh, and another thing, I will give you the dimensions. There's still a pocket here. So we will have a pretty large tag that goes there. Okay, so here is our page with our two flaps. Oops, flap one, flap two, and we'll be putting like a little, kind of like a little file folder flap uh, tab on each one of these. And then we have a pocket. I forgot to put a uh, tag in there. I will make sure you have those dimensions. And then these are, this is our belly band page. So there's our large tag. Here is another one of those little flappy majiggers. And here's a three and a quarter by four and a quarter tag. And then this is our final flap and I will give you the dimensions uh, the tag that will probably be going here will probably be five and a half by or five and seven eighths by six and seven eighths I believe okay and then again we'll have something over here so that is the book itself but you can see there's still plenty of room because right now we're only using up that much of the spine. There's still plenty of room for us to decorate and use a lot of chipboard pieces and a lot of fun pieces. And um, 